Hallelujah. Okay, today is my second sermon on the series, The Church. Right, okay, let us recap the five purposes of the church, right, which are taken from the Great Commandment and the, and the Great Commission. All right? Okay, let's recap. Okay, let's read together. First, the first purpose of the church. Hey, Alama, no energy. La. <laughs> energy, la, better together, right? Remember, better together. Wow, wait, 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 I've got to take my t shirt. Ah. Better? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, nice on the t shirt. Nice, huh? Yeah. If I wear it, it'll be even nicer. Yeah, because I look good, huh? so everything I put on also look good. <laughs> okay, so one, two, three. Worship. The church exists to. Number two. Ministry. Number three. Amen. Number four. Number five. Tell your neighbor you did very well. <laughs> because we are better. Okay, so remember this, no? Blessed Grace Church exists to fulfill these five purposes. Right? These five purposes, these five purposes are not placed in the order of importance. Right? They are all important. Right? We might not do all these five purposes. Pu- 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 five purposes <laughs> equally well, but we need to do all of them. Amen? Yeah, a little, a little bit hot, huh? Yeah, I... Cola. I can't play like a bit hot like that. Okay, this one only only one only one. Okay, this one this one put a bit colder a bit. Okay, I'll start with the fourth purpose of the church. Okay, that is fellowship. Right, the church exists as a family for believers for the purpose of maybe everybody say fellowship. Okay, you must know this. Huh? from the very beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, He already had in mind a family that he can relate to and love. So this was the reason why he created Adam and Eve. So after creating Adam and Eve, he gave them this command. Right? In Genesis 1, 28. Do it together. And God said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So God wanted Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply because God had wanted the generations of people that would come forth from Adam and Eve to be part of his family. But unfortunately, Adam and Eve sinned against God and they were kicked out of the family. So as a result, God's family was broken. So was God's heart. But God's desire for a family did not waver. So what did He do? He sent His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, down to this earth to die on the cross so that those who believe in Jesus would be brought back into God's family. Amen? Amen. John chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Let's read together. 1, 2, 3. He came that... Hey, no, no, punch it again. Huh? We are better what? <laughs> we are better what? <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become. Amen. So, how many of you have believed in the name of Jesus? Put up your hand. Woo! Tell your neighbor you are a child of God. Amen. Tell another neighbor I'm also a child of God. Okay, remember this, huh? God only wants children for Himself and not orphans. That is why, after believing in Jesus, God puts you in a church because the church exists 
as the family of God for you all, believers of Christ. And Blessed Grace Church is your spiritual family. Tell your neighbour, Blessed Grace Church is your family. Yeah, God put you in the family. God put you together. Why? Because we are... Yeah. God put you in the church together because we are better together. Amen. So write this down. You are born into God's family through faith in Jesus. You see, every human being was created by God. But not everyone is a child of God. The only way to get into God's family is to be born again into it. You become a member of the human family by your first birth, but you become a member of God's family by your second birth, when you are born again. You see, the human families that we have on earth are temporary only. Well, all of us will leave this earth one day, right? How many of you don't need to leave this earth one day? You will live forever. <laughs> you all will die. <laughs> okay, but the church family that we have in Blessed Grace Church will be forever together in heaven. Amen. Wow. Like, you're not very excited like that. Wow. <laughs> I don't know whether it's good news or bad news to you. La. <laughs> For some of you, oh, the person I don't like also will be with me in heaven forever. Ayah. How can that be heaven like that? <laughs> Still got to meet that person. <laughs> okay, so you don't get to decide who gets to heaven. Only God decides. Amen? So we will be family again in heaven. Forever. I will meet you. Huh? You all will meet me also. Huh? Amen? <laughs> good news or bad news? Good news. La. I mean, you sure good news. All right? Yeah, <laughs> or maybe you won't recognize me because my face, my face will be very handsome. Right? <laughs> like Korean actor. <laughs> okay, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. So the Apostle Paul said, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family... Where? In heaven eh? and on earth derive his name. So there are families in heaven and on earth too. Right? The families on earth are temporary, whereas the family in heaven are for eternity. So when we believe in Jesus, God did not immediately take us back to heaven to join his family. Right? He leaves us here on earth and put us into a spiritual family. God's family here on earth called the church. And Blessed Grace Church is your spiritual family. Amen. Amen. Right? Blessed Grace Church, the best church in Singapore. Amen. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> because I'm the pastor of the church. <laughs> and God put you in this family for what? For fellowship. Amen. Amen. Right? For fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. fellowship. Chinese, how you say Chinese? Ching Chang. <laughs> Anyhow, say Ching Chang, Ching Chang. Hello. <laughs> okay, who can say get this t shirt? Uh, 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 everybody say Tuan Chi. Tuan Chi. I don't know, Tai Chi or what? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Not Tai Chi lah, Tuan Chi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, first let us define fellowship. Okay, what is fellowship? <laughs> I didn't say what is fellowship in Chinese. What is the meaning of fellowship? <laughs> Clever, you learn very fast, you know. <laughs> okay, what's the meaning of fellowship? Okay, the Greek. Okay. 
Okay, sometimes when I when I when I when I, when I go out and have a wonderful meal with uh, church friends and all that, I'll post on Facebook, right? And I'll say, Wow, great fellowship. May how the Tuan Chi. All of you looking at the food only, right? I know. I see all of you. Uh, <laughs> You all never look at fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. Ah, yeah, you all. Uh. <laughs> so what does fellowship mean? Okay, the Greek word for fellowship is called koinonia. koinonia. Everybody say koinonia. koinonia. <laughs> Sound a bit funny. Uh. <laughs> okay, what does it mean? It means to experience and share life together. Yeah. Right, so this, uh, you know, I went out with Anton, Daisy, and uh, some church friends. Right, because Anton and Daisy, they are from Indonesia. So for one and a half years to two years, they couldn't come to Singapore because of COVID. Now that Singapore is open up, wow, they came to Singapore. So we had a time of fellowship. What's the meaning of fellowship? Koenonia, Tuan Chi. What's the meaning of fellowship? Experience and share life together, right? So we experience, we share life together. Hey, then the how, how the last two years in Indonesia? How? Oh, then they ask me, oh, two years your church? How? How everything that we share life together? We update each other. So that is called what? Fellowship. Okay, what's fellowship in Chinese? Tuan Chi. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is fellowship. Yeah, we are experiencing and sharing life together, right? The key word is together. Everybody say together. Yeah, yeah this is the key word. Huh? The key word is together. Together, right? You cannot fellowship alone. Right? Alone, how to fellowship? Unless you fellowship mirror, like you look at oh, how you, how you, that mirror say, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Go IMH. <laughs> so the key word is everybody say together. Everybody say together. Why? Because we are. Yeah. Huh? Quenonia, <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> so listen here, God has never meant for us to go through life alone. So for this reason, we are born into a human family to experience and share life together with other family members. So similarly, when you believe in Jesus, you are born again into God's family called the church. Because God wants you to experience and share life together with other members of the family. Right? Because we are better together. Amen? Amen. So Psalm 68 verse 6 says, God sets the lonely in families. So God does not want anyone here on earth to go through life lonely and alone. He sets them in families. So you are born into a family when you believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Born again into God's family. So everyone who calls themselves a Christian, you must join a church. Because God does not want orphans. God wants children in his family, put you together because we are better together. You are not good alone. You get lost, right? You get eaten by Satan. You get drawn away by Mangla. <laughs> so not good. <laughs> so it's not good to be alone. Amen? It's always better to be together. Amen? You see, today, culture of independent individualism has created many spiritual orphans. Many Christians believe that one can be a good Christian without joining or attending a local church. But this is not biblical. Right? Ephesians 2.19 says, So you are no longer strangers and outsiders. 
You are citizens together. Everybody say together. Yeah. Come on, say together. Say together. together. Still not together. Say together. Together. Yeah. <laughs> you are citizens together with who? God's people. You are together with, to be members of God's family. Amen? Amen? Okay, so now that you know what fellowship means, right? What does fellowship mean? What does, what does fellowship mean? Yeah, Tuan Chi, Kononia, right? Experiencing and sharing life together, right? So let us find out what biblical fellowship requires. Okay, biblical fellowship requires loving relationships. Yeah. So tell your neighbor, I love you. Ask your neighbor, do you love me or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there might be loving relationships. Amen. <laughs> Okay, to find, to find out whether Blessed Grace Church, whether we all are strong in this area or not, we can ask ourselves some questions. Am I treating other believers in the church like members of my own family? Are you all? Yes. Sure not. Okay. okay, I believe you. Okay, good, good, good. Are there members in the family that I can share at a genuine heart-to-heart -heart level, God, or not? You need at least one or two or three. They can share heart to heart. Yes. Have or not? Yes. Have, huh? Okay, another question you need to ask yourself is this also. You see, when you come for service on Sunday, do you think of yourself as coming to church or returning home to a family? Important, huh? Because if you think of yourself as coming for church service to worship God, you will come and just find a seat and sit down there. People around you are not important to you because you're only coming to church to worship God. So that person can cry, got any problem, I don't care. I only worship God. <laughs> yeah, if that's your thinking, lah, church is just a place to come and worship God. Right? So anybody cry and they go and, they go and die, lah, you know, not your problem. Lah, no? No, not my problem. <laughs> not my problem. <laughs> I come to church. <laughs> Hi. Last time you all go to Catholic church. Do you all care about those people who. Yeah, you just. No, 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 no. Then after that, go back. Right, right, right. Because you're just going to that church to worship God. But no, for, 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 for our church, no. Right? For, for, for the church of Jesus Christ, no. Because we've got to think of ourselves as coming to back home to a. Family, because when you think of yourself as coming home to a family, right, you will come earlier, you look for fellow believers to catch up with and fellowship, share life together. Hey, how do you want to die? I don't know how to a lock, you know. <laughs> how your employer this week? You share life together because you are family, you all are sisters in Christ. Amen. You're a family, God's family. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so we must treat each other as family members. Yeah. So loving one another starts at home. Amen? So in church, you see, we usually emphasize on loving those who are outside the church, right? Unbelievers. Because we need to reach out to them. Okay, this is not wrong, huh? but this is not how God wants us to prioritize love. Actually, God wants us to learn to love those in the family first. Yeah. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, huh? all people, including those outside. Especially, as we, everybody say, especially, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Yeah. Love starts at home. Another verse I give you. Honour everyone. Love the family of believers. No, we must love one another first. Do you love the one sitting next to you? Yes. So look at your neighbor and say, I love you, Lahina. I love you. I love you. 
I love you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We must learn to love one another first before we can love people outside. If you don't love one another here, how to love people outside? Right or not? We must love those who are hurting here first before we can love those who are hurting outside. Yeah, amen. <laughs> so God wants us to love the family of believers first because God wants His family to be known for His love. So that every newcomer who comes in, wow, they can feel the love in this family and be loved. Then they will want to come back. They want to know this God. Wow, this God must be a God of love because there's so much love going around here. Amen? Amen. The unbeliever come in here, you all are fighting one another, gossiping about this person, about that person. The, 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 the person who come, you why like that one? I think I better go Lucky Plaza, better lah. You know? Right? Or no? Yeah, there's so much hatred here, so much animosity, right? So much division here. Then who want to come here? So God wants His family to be known for its love. You know, I've told you that my mom hates Christianity right before she was saved. I, go, I told you the testimony. Eh? But there, there was, I remember there was one good thing no, that my mom said about the church. She once told me, no, your, wow, your Christians are very cooperative. Yeah. How can you say? You are very cooperative. I said, <laughs> better don't ask you to say. <laughs> I think what she meant was, wow, your Christians are very loving and you all wow, really love each other. Very cooperative. You are very <laughs> okay, but really true, no? True, no? Last time I did churches, uh, you know, when I first became a Christian uh, in 1986, quite long ago, uh, the time we, we, we can feel the love for one another. No? But I, said, I say this with sadness uh, in my heart, no? We have lost that love for each other in the church. I think it's because, you know, people have become more and more individualistic over the years. And this individualism has crept into the church. We only fend for ourselves. We only think of ourselves. We don't think of each other. So I hope that this series on the church you know, will, help this, will help Blessed Grace Church to bring back the culture of fellowship, the sharing of life you know, with each other, right? to love and to care for one another, to bring this spirit, bring this culture back to Blessed Grace Church. Amen? Because God wants His family to be known for His love. So that when unbelievers come to the church, they will feel love and be loved. They will realize that in God's family, wow, there is great fellowship and there is great loving relationship. Right? Jesus said this in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. Okay, read it together. One, two, three. Well, in these two verses, three times, huh? Jesus said, love one another. Love one another. Love one another. Amen. <laughs> Scared that you already forget. So he keeps saying again and again. Right, why? Because by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Yep. <laughs> So, 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 so I, I'm very thankful to God no? because after I preached uh, yesterday at the Hokkien and the Chinese service, wow, after that they all go out for fellowship together. No? Wow, they start to love one another already. Yeah. So I, so I hope that this will also happen in the Filipino ministry. La. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all of us will be loving one another. Okay, so hug your neighbor a bit and say, I love you. Okay, I have to put a word of caution here. Huh? We have caution here. We have to ensure that we don't go to the other extreme of loving each other so much huh, that we forget to love those who just come into the church. You know what I mean? It can happen if we are not careful. No? We can be so comfortable in our little clique that we ignore those who are new in the church. 
right? So having cliques, right, being with people they are comfortable with, familiar with, it's not wrong, huh? But just make sure that your clique can expand one, no? can include people, new people in. So your clique must go bigger and bigger. Yes, amen. amen? So remember this, huh? we are family and we are better together. Okay, so when it comes to fellowship, smaller is better. <coughs> right? Because you can't, you can't fellowship in a crowd. So right in the, in the first church, right, they met in the temple courts. So the Bible tells us that every day, you know, remember the, the first church that was established, 3,000 people came to know the Lord? And they started the first church. And then they continued to meet together, everybody together, in the temple courts. They brought bread in their homes and ate together. See, they met together in the temple courts to worship God. After that, they broke up into smaller groups and then they broke break breads in their homes and ate together, have fellowship together in their homes, in smaller groups. No more 3,000 people. They break themselves into smaller groups to have fellowship. So you all have small groups, right? How many of you belong to a small group? Everyone, ah? Connect group, connect group. How many of you are in the connect group? Yeah. Not all. Ah. So those who are those who didn't raise their hand better join a connect group. Okay, the, 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 I mean, okay, I understand that the main disadvantage for the Filipino ministry is because you know you all are helpers. Right? You all have different timing. You only can come out on Sunday. Yeah, some of your employees, wow, I want to work you until 11 p.m. Wow, you know, terrible. Ah. Yeah. So a bit more difficult. But but try lah. Amen? Amen? Yeah, it's better. So, you know, try and meet up over Zoom, also good. But for the other services, easier because we are Singaporeans, we can come out anytime. So, they have connect groups on Friday, on Saturday, and things like that. Yeah? <coughs> so, I understand. Okay, the next point. Biblical fellowship first requires loving relationships. Secondly, is unity in the Family. So this family must have unity. No division, eh? Because unity is the heart of fellowship. You see, Satan knows that if he destroys unity in the church, he will rip the heart out of fellowship in God's family. Because unity is the heart of fellowship. So you see, the, the, you see fellowship, the experiencing and sharing of one's life cannot take place <coughs> when there is disunity and lack of trust <coughs> in the family. Do you know that the Bible talks more about unity in the New Testament than heaven and hell put together? It's more important to God, no? Unity. Very important to God. i give you two verses. Ephesians 4, 3. Read together. 1, 2, 3. Make every effort huh, to keep the unity. Every effort. 1 Corinthians 1.10, read together. 1, 2, 3. That all of you agree with one another. No division among you. Amen? Amen? Do you agree with one another or not? Is there any division among you or not? <laughs> Are you all perfectly united or not? <laughs> you see, like every parent, our family father enjoys watching his children get along with each other. Do you know that? You know, your heavenly father feels sad, huh? When you are divided, huh? Gossip about your leader, gossip about each other, say, say hateful things. You have any father, no? <clears throat> Heart will be broken. Like if your, if your children, no, they fight with each other, not united. You as parents, as your, you all as mother, will you feel upset? Yeah, yeah you all feel sad too, right? Same with God, no? That's why God wants us to always agree with one another, no divisions, perfectly united. Okay, let me ask you, uh, 
Do you know why God used the term family to describe the church? Why? Why does God use the term family, family of God, to describe the church? Why? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a term that we are very familiar with. All of us know what family is because we are all born into a family. So God wants us to ask ourselves, you know, the thing that we do in the church family, will we do the same in our own human family? Question that we can ask our, we can ask ourselves is this: Would you intentionally, intentionally sow discord and division in your own family? Would you? No. I hope not, lah. <laughs> Would you leave your family when you disagree with your siblings or when you are, or you disagree with your parents? Would you throw it back your back and go <laughs> and leave home? Will you or not? I hope not. <laughs> Would you gossip and say bad things about your family, your parents, when you're unhappy with them? No. Hope not. Nah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Only say about employer. <laughs> you see, I think most of the answers to this question would be no, right? But many Christians would do it to their church family, you know. They were so discord in their own church family. And every time they're not happy, you know, yeah, with your, each other, yeah, with Sister Grace, they will pack up and go. Well, you think Blessed Grace Church is the only church in Singapore? Many church, I uh, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of some small misunderstanding, pack up and go already. Without me, you see whether you all can survive or not. Can survive, lah, hello. <laughs> and go out and say gossip, some bad things about. Yeah, we don't do it in our own family, but we are doing it in the church family, you know? Do you know why? Because they don't treat church as a family. They see church only as a place they go to to worship God. They don't think they need to be as committed to each other as they are to God. I'm committed to God enough already. I don't need to be committed to, the, to each other. Wrong, huh? Write this down. God wants you to be as committed to each other as you are to Him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the level of commitment that God wants you to have for each other? Do you, all know, do you all want to know the level of commitment that God wants you all to have for each other? You look at this verse. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Right? This is the level of commitment no? that God wants you to have for each other. As Jesus Christ has laid down His life for us, so we ought to lay down our lives for each other. So tell your neighbor, I will die for you. Sure or not? <laughs> Ask another neighbor, will you die for me or not? <laughs> I will die for you and die for you. <laughs> Do not ruin your blood, I will die for you and die for you. But this is a level of commitment no, that we must have for each other. No? <coughs> Not only small misunderstanding, well, I don't want to be committed to you already. I, I, I leave you. I, I leave the church. You know, I don't want to see you anymore. Hello? You see, uh, who, uh, 1 John 4.20 says, Whoever claims to love God. How many of you love God? Oh. Wow, you are committed to God, huh? How many of you love one another? Put up a hand. Sure, no. <laughs> sure, no. <laughs> because whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister in the church is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they can see cannot love God whom they have not 
sin. You see, the people that you'll find in church are real people, not perfect people. How many of you are perfect people? Put up your hand. How many of you are not perfect people? Put up your hand. Yeah, we are all imperfect people. Right? So, so, so in this church here, we are all imperfect people. We are all real people. We are very real. Right? So the people around you will upset you. Because they are not perfect. People around you will displease you. Will hurt you. Will offend you. Yes, well, very loud. Yes, yes. <laughs> right now, will irritate you. Yeah. Because we are all real people, not perfect people. <coughs> and God put imperfect people together in the church. Why? To grow you. To help you grow spiritually. Right, so you rub with uh, those imperfect people and then they irritate you. They, oh, they, they hurt you. They say something that offend you. But you get upset. <laughs> <laughs> and then remember the sermon. Oh, you must love my brothers and sisters. Okay, la, okay, la, okay. La. Yeah, yeah, I love, love, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, then you love back. You grow, what? Uh. Well, now you, yeah, you are hurt. You are hurt, but now you follow God. You, you, because you follow God's word. So you, 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 you grow. And then after that, you, 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 you meet another person also irritated you, also uh, say all kinds of things. Uh, very angry, very angry. But you say, oh, yeah, God's word. Ah, yeah, that day, that day, I do quiet time. God remind me, I must love one another. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Then you grow. You grow. Yeah. And then you get upset with your leader, or you get upset with uh, Sister Grace. Uh, yeah, why make this decision? Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? Why that? Why that? And then after you read the Bible, uh, submit to your leader. Oh, you're okay, okay, okay. 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 Uh, uh, Grace, uh, hello, yeah, okay. Yeah, what you want me to do, uh, Sister Grace? Yeah. You grow. Every time you meet a small problem, some people offend you, you get angry, you leave. How to grow? How to grow? You go to another church, same thing, because you are immature. You don't grow. The same problem will happen. Right now. Come on, let's give glory to God. Amen. You don't have roots. How to grow fruits? Amen. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> Okay, so in the church, in the church, okay, we got to look at fellowship already, right? We gonna we gotta we gonna make opportunities for you all to have fellowship. I know this, I know it's more difficult for you all than for other services, but but we gotta think of ways, all right? So we are opening up the fifth floor, the fifth floor, right, to be a fellowship hall, right, for a place for all of you to fellowship. Yeah, so we arrange, uh, we will get grace, and you all to arrange. Okay, so you'll be for the whole church. We are gonna, we are thinking of putting up a, a cafe corner, coffee corner, on the fifth floor, right? So we're gonna buy more tables and then we're gonna set it up, and also that anybody you know, you know, can come and just sit down there and fellowship. This is the thing we want to do. Okay, so so you all work with Sister Grace, right? Your leaders, you all going to think of some ideas. You know, that we, we we definitely going to set it up. So give us a few more weeks, and everything will be set up, and we really, really will have need to have fellowship. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> okay, last one last thing before I end, right? Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse seventeen. Okay, let's read together. Obey your leaders. Yeah. So obey your leaders. Obey your leaders. And submit to them. Why? Because they keep watch over your soul. No, they must give an account, no, to God for your souls, right? Sister Grace, your leaders all. 
But then one day you also know will be accountable to God, huh? You have to account to God on how well you follow your leaders. Amen? So let, let us do all this together. Yeah, let's get to know one another better. Because we are better together. Right, so get to know each other's name. Do you all know each other's name? Don't know. Okay, now all stand up. <laughs> Okay, I want you all to go around and get to know each other's name. Go, now. One minute, two minutes. Come on, come on, come on. All stand up, all stand up together, together, together. Okay, go around, go around, go around. Get to know each other's name. No, later I'm going to call you, come out. Right? <laughs> come on, come on, get up, get up, get up. Go and uh, walk around. Get to know each other's name. Come on, together, together. Because we are better together. Come on, get to know those people who are sitting down. They don't walk around. Come on, get to know them. <laughs> Get to know them. Come on, get to know their name. Get to know their name and say hello. I am who and who. Yeah, you all must get to know that we are sisters in Christ, yeah? Amen? Okay, can I call uh, Sister Grace? Where is Sister Grace? Okay, where are your leaders? Can you all your leaders come forward? Where are the where are Sister Grace leader? Call team all. Come forward. Come. We're gonna pray um, for you. Call team zone leaders and connect group leaders. Please come forward. And ministry leaders also, please come yeah, forward. Yeah, come forward, come forward. Those at the loft area. Should they come down? Come yeah, you guys come down. Um, if you are a CG leader or a ministry leader or a zone leader, please come down. Okay, this is Sister Grace and uh, all the leaders, right? Connect group leaders, ministry leaders, right? Okay, this group of people are most important. They need to be together. They need to be joined together. They need to be united. Right? So very important for them to be united together. Right? So that unity will flow down to the to the whole to the whole Filipino ministry. Alright? So can we all stand to pray for them right now? Can you all stretch up your hands to pray for them? And then ask God, ask God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shandara makura nara nara. Ask God, ask God to join their hearts together in un unity, in oneness. Ask God, ask God to bless them, anoint them. Or that the spirit of unity and oneness will flow into the whole Filipino ministry. Hallelujah. Father God, I praise you, Lord. I praise you for Sister Grace and all the leaders, connect group leaders, ministry leaders. Lord, I thank you for their lives, for their lives that are willing to come forward to serve you in this ministry, Lord. And Lord, indeed, they are serving you well. Hallelujah. And so, God, I pray, Lord, even as we are starting on this, the, the, the series on the church, Lord. Lord, we pray for your anointing to be upon Sister Grace and all the leaders here, Lord. So that, Lord, the spirit of unity will flow down to the, to the, to the whole congregation, Lord. And that all, Lord, all 
all members will be united as one, Lord, to bring glory and honour to your name, Lord. And so, Lord, bless each and every one of them. Anoint them, Lord, in their respective positions, Lord, so that, Lord, that they will just do your, your work with greater anointing, with greater power as they join together as one in, in, in unity and in oneness, Lord. And so, Father, bless them as I commit them to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.